What's going on, fifth grade? This is Teacher Mr. Dooley. Welcome to week two, day three of our Chelim First unit. We're going to continue with Chelim First, finish it, and come back and talk about what you're going to think about as far as comparing and contrasting different points of the story, specifically all around the character Shang Ling. So, here we go. Where we left off, she's going to go see if she can get porridge from a food distribution shack. Let's see how that goes. Finally, when it was her turn, Yang Li Lu's the butler scooped the last portion of porridge into her bowl, Shang Li, and said to the rest of the people in line, Sorry, no more porridge left today. Come back early tomorrow. The person behind Shang Ling began to cry. Shang Ling turned around and and saw the woman who reminded her of her mother, except that she was much older. Without a word, she emptied her porridge into the woman's bowl and walked away. The butler was surprised at what Shang Ling had done. Just as she made her way back to the road, he caught up with her and said, Young lady, I don't understand. Why, why did you give away your porridge? Are, are you not hungry? I am hungry, said Shang Ling, but I am young and I can stand hunger a bit longer. You are very unselfish, said the man. I would like to help you. My master, Yang Wan Lu, is looking for someone to take care of his little boy. If you're interested, I'll be happy to recommend you. Shang Ling gratefully accepted his offer and brought to the house and was brought to the house where Yang Wan Lu had uh, lived and also where his wife lived. Yang Wan Lu, a man in his early 30s, was impressed by Shang Ling's graceful bearing and agreed to hire her. My wife's health is very delicate. She rarely leaves her room. Your job is to take care of our son. You may play with him anywhere in the garden, but there is one place you must never go, and that is the Pearl Hall. The house stands by itself on the east side of the garden. It is a sacred place, and if you ever go in there, you will be dismissed immediately. So Shang Ling began her life as a governess. The little boy in her care was very spoiled. Whenever he wanted anything, he wanted it right away, and if he didn't get it, he would cry and cry until he got it. Shang Ling was saddened by this behavior and reminded her of how spoiled she was as a child. One day, Shang Ling and the little boy were in the garden. Suddenly, the ball they were playing with disappeared through the window of the Pearl Hall. The boy began to wail, I want my ball, I want my ball, go get my ball. Young master, I cannot enter the Pearl Hall, said Shang Ling. Your father doesn't allow it. I will be dismissed if I do. But the little boy only cried louder. And finally, Shang Ling decided that she had no choice. She walked over to the east side of the garden and looked around. No one was in sight. She quickly walked up to the steps that led to the Pearl Hall and again made sure that no one was watching. Then she opened the door and stepped in. She found herself standing in front of an altar where two candles and some incense sticks were burning. But in the, but in the place where people usually put wooden name tablets of their ancestors was a Chi Lin purse. Chi Lin purse! Instantly she recalled the events of her wedding day and how happy she had been. She thought of her wonderful husband and her own son and how much she missed them. She had everything then, and now she had nothing. Shang Ling burst into tears. Suddenly, she felt a hand on her shoulder. When she turned around, she found herself face to face with Miss Lu, her mistress, and a young maid. What are you doing here? Miss Lu asked, angrily. The young master told me to come in here and pick up his ball, Shang Ling replied. Then why are you weeping at the altar? Well, because I saw the purse which once belonged to me. Miss Lu looked really startled. Where are you from, she asked as she took the purse from the altar and sat down in a chair that leaned against a long table. There was a tremble in her voice. I'm from Ting Chao. Bring her a stool, said Mrs. Liu, motioning to the maid, not wanting to wait on another servant. The maid grudgingly brought the stool and put it and put it back, to put it under Mrs. Liu's right. You may sit down, said Mrs. Liu, somewhat confused. Cheng Ling sat down. What is your maiden name? Zhou Cheng Ling. When were you married? On the 18th day of the sixth moon, six years ago. Bring her a chair and put it to my left, Miss Lu ordered the maid. Shang Ling was told to move to the chair. She was surprised to see herself treated as a guest of honor. Tell me how you lost the purse, said Mrs. Lu. It was a gift from my mother. A wedding procession was stopped on the road because of the storm, and my Hua Chao was carried into a pavilion. There was another Hua Chao in it, and the bridge was crying. Bridge crying is just another way of saying water was flooding. Move her chair to the middle of to the middle and move mine to the right side, ordered Mrs. Liu. The chairs were switched up once again. Shang Ling was told to sit down. She was astonished to find herself sitting in the middle seat, the place of the highest honor. Please continue, said Mrs. Liu. I gave the bride my purse. I never saw it again, and I have no idea how it got here. 
Mrs. Liu dropped to her knees in front of Shang Ling and cried.